Hey, what's up guys? Evers here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys on how to become a lawyer in Malaysia. Becoming a lawyer in Malaysia is a very long process and there are a lot of procedures that we have to comply with. In this video, I'll be making it as short as possible to describe all the process step by step. We will begin by looking at these two important doc legal documents, which are the Legal Profession Act or the LPA as well as the Bar Council rulings. Both of these legal documents are, docu are, are important for you to become a lawyer in Malaysia. We will be looking at the LPA first. This is the legal document or act which will specify on how you will become a lawyer in Malaysia. So let's look at the provisions or the sections within the LPA first. First and foremost, we will be looking at section three of the LPA, which provides for the interpretation. So in order for you to become a lawyer in Malaysia, you need to become a qualified person. And in order for you to become a qualified person, you need to go to a university which offers a law degree. Under section three, it mentions that a qualified person means someone who has passed their final examination, leading to the degree a Bachelor of Laws of the University of Malaya, the University of Malaya in Singapore, and the University of Singapore, or the National University of Singapore. Basically, you need to get a law degree from the University of Malaya, but there's a catch. Because the LPA has been amended many, many times, and now you can get a law degree from other universities instead of University of Malaya. And the LPA keeps on updating what are the new universities that you can get your law degree. For example, you can get your law degree from UITM, which is located in Shah Alam. You can get your law degree from the International Islamic University of Malaysia, the National University of Malaysia, or University of Kebangsa in Malaysia, and apart from that, I think only recently, in the, early, in the late 2000s, yes, the late 2010, you can get your law degree from UNISA, USIM, MSU. Oh yes, and you can also get your law degree from UUM, which is University Utara Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken, because the LPA, LPA has amended that to include those universities. For example, this is where it states the, the, the new universities that you can apply for your law degree. So the LPA will constantly be updated. Maybe one day, maybe your university has a law degree and it is accepted and qualified to get a law degree to become a lawyer in Malaysia. So UITM got their recognition in 1998, if I'm not mistaken. In 1996, UKM got their recognition in 1990. UIA got its recognition in 1987. UUM just recently got their recognition in 2008. Multimedia University in 2008 as well. And just, so yeah, and USIM in 2018. UNISA in 2015. So yeah, those are some of the new universities that has their degree recognized to become a lawyer in Malaysia. But what if you study abroad? What if you study law in a foreign country such as Australia, the United Kingdom, maybe New Zealand maybe? For that matter, the LPA also mentions that the LPQA, I think it's the Legal Profession Qualif Qualification Board, LPQB, which whereby the LPQB will offer the CLP, which is the Certificate of Legal Practice. In that CLP, foreign, foreign students, Malaysian students who study abroad need to take the CLP examinations in order to become a lawyer. Unlike local students, we do not need to do CLP. So therefore, once you finish your studies abroad in foreign countries, then you have to come back to Malaysia and do your CLP examinations. And to be honest with you, the CLP is a very difficult and hard exam because most foreign Malaysian students who study abroad don't even study Malaysian law. And once they come back here, it will be very difficult. And I've heard that the failure rate is 90%. We will now go move forward to other sections within the LPA. So section 10, of course, in order for you to become a qualified person, you need to get a law degree, a recognized law degree. And moreover, if you read section 11 of the LPA, it also further highlights what are more of the requirements for you to become a lawyer in Malaysia. So this is section 11 right here. And it says that number one, you need to be at least 18 years old. You need to have a good character. You cannot be convicted of a crime in Malaysia. 
You cannot be adjudicated bankrupt. You are not liable or disbarred or disqualified or suspended as a legal practitioner, practitioner in any other country. The same also applies in England as well. You need to be a federal citizen, meaning to say you need to be Malaysian or a permanent resident of Malaysia. You have to be, you have satisfactorily served in Malaysia for this prescribed period of privilege for qualified persons. Meaning to say that once you've got your law degree, you need to do your chambering, which is for nine months. You might need to take the Bahasa Malaysia qualifying examination. This is only applicable for people who have not taken their BM or SPM. So if you have already taken your BM for SPM, you do not, you do not need to take your Bahasa Malaysia qualifying examination. This is only for students who did not do their BM for SPM. Now for session 12, as I mentioned, you need to do your pupillage. Let's recap again. Number one, you need to get a recognized law degree certificate. And number two, you need to do your chambering or your pupillage, and it is for nine months. So for pupillage or chambering, you need to find a master and your master needs to be at least or have seven years of experience as a lawyer. And this is what is stated in the Bar Council ruling. So if I were to search for the page, it clearly mentions here at over here. So you need to find a master, you need to find a lawyer who can teach you, who can guide you for nine months. And that lawyer needs to have experience for at least seven years. And he can only take two pupils at one time. During your chambering as well, before you start doing your chambering or your pupillage, you need to need to file for admission of petition and inquiries. The Bar Council will be investigating if you have good character or not. And afterwards, once you've done your admission of petition and inquiries, you need to file for a petition for admission with affidavit. In this affidavit, you need to do this affidavit, affidavit if you want to become a lawyer in the future during your chambering. And there are a lot of documents that you have to prepare in order for you to file for a petition for affidavit during your chambering. This includes true copies of any documentary evidence showing that he is a qualified person, two recent certificates of good character, certificate of diligence, where applicable certificates signed by the secretary of, of the board, and there, there are also requirements, a certificate from his principal, true copies of any document, evidence showing that he is a federal citizen, true copies of any document, evidence that he has passed or is exempted for the Bahasa Malaysia qualifying examination, petition notice affidavit and certificates referred, and the petitioner shall file his petition at the registrar's office at the central registry accompanied by notices. These are some of the documents and other requirements that you need during your chambering, chambering or pupillage application. Actually, as under section 16, someone can also file for a petition to object you becoming a lawyer or doing your chambering. So there might be somebody who might file for an object, objection against you. And someone might also apply for a caveat against you as well to stop you from becoming a lawyer or do your chambering as this is provided as under section 17 of the LPA. During your chambering, and if you want to become a lawyer, you need to fill in Forms 1 until 8, ataupun borang 1 sampai borang 8. And under the LPA, they have already provided what are the forms when you want to file at the court or during your chambering. And these are some of the forms. So you have Form 1 until Form 8. This is Form 1. And the last form looks something like this. This is the last form in the LPA. So yeah. To recap again once more, you need to get a recognized law degree from a recognized from a university that's recognized by the LPQB. Once you get a law degree, you do your chambering for nine months with a master, and you need to prepare all the documents and all the necessary paperwork to become a lawyer. And during that nine months, you will be training with your master. You, you're essentially already working with that master and a law firm so throughout that nine months you'll be learning about what how to you know just do lawyerly work work inside the law firm and other incidental work inside a law firm and then once you've already done your chambering for nine months only then you can be called and be included in the role of advocates and solicitors so after finishing nine months of chambering you go to court with your master and then there will be this, some sort of ceremony in front, in front of the judge 
And once you've done with all of those ceremony, then you are officially a lawyer as your name will be included as part of the role. And this is provided as under section 36 of the LPA, that an ad, which, which mentions that an advocate and solicitor to have name on the role before practice. So I, there you have it. Those are the three main steps in order for you to become a lawyer in Malaysia. I'll say it once more, is to get a law degree, a recognized law degree by the LPQB. Number two is to, to do your chambering with a master where you'll be learning and be guided by him for nine months. And number three is to be called to the role or to the High Court of Malaya if you are practicing, if you want to become a lawyer in Semenanjung. So yeah, these are the three steps. I hope it was easy to understand. And the process and procedures I've told is complete, uh, you know, understandable and compre comprehensible. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please do let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or you have any misconceptions or you have any doubts or if there is something that you did not understand in this video. Until then, I'll see you guys again next time. Au revoir. A bientôt. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, guys. Thank you so much. Love you.